So far all of your flights have been during the day and now you're ready for your first night flight. So you're required to have, for your private pilot, you're required to have three hours of night training with your instructor, which must also include a cross country as well as 10 takeoff and landings to a full stop. Now keep in mind, those are minimums, so if you and or your instructor feel like you need any additional training, by all means, you're welcome to do another hour or two or whatever is needed, okay? So when we um, consider flying at night, there's many things that we have to take into consideration. First of all, when are we allowed to even log night flight? Well, the FAA's definition of night time is which is the definition where you can legally start logging night flight. And the definition of night time is the end of evening civil twilight to the beginning of morning civil twilight. That means that it's about 30 minutes past official sunset. So official sunset, if it happened to be 8 o'clock, for example, then you would start logging it around 8.30ish. Um, you can think of it as dusk. Dusk is the time of day where we can see the shape of the trees but no longer distinguish the color. Um, and that would be what the FA considers nighttime. All right, now also keep in mind that for our eyes to acclimate to the dark, it takes about 20 or 30 to minutes, 20 or 30 minutes to go from bright lit area into a dimly lit area. So when you're considering the I'm safe, remember it stands for illness, medication, stress, alcohol, fatigue, and eating and hydration, pay special attention to the fatigue portion because most people are naturally more alert, awake during the daylight hours, and then that alertness is gonna diminish as night progresses on. So make sure that you're very well rested for your evening flight. Now the next thing you wanna consider is what personal items or equipment you might want to take in addition to your normal uh, flight bag where you might have your charts and publications, headset, writing utensils, or whatever. Um, for night, you wanna take two flashlights. One should be a bright white flashlight that you're gonna use for pre-flight, and the other one should be a red light that you're gonna use in the cockpit. Having a red light in the cockpit allows you to, to see items, but it won't ruin your, your night vision. Again, rem remember that it takes about 30, 20 or 30 minutes for your eyes to acclimate from a bright light to the dimly lit area. All right, the next thing is um, aircraft equipment. So what additional aircraft equipment do we have to have? In a prior video, we talked about um, an acronym called A Tomato Flames, which happens to be all of our day VFR items that were required. At night, we also need flaps. So our acronym is F-L-A-P-S. And what that stands for is fuses. So if your aircraft has fuses, you have to have a certain number of spare fuses available. L is for landing light. So if the aircraft is for hire, you have to have a um, operable landing light. A is anti-collision light. So if your aircraft didn't have an anti-collision light for the daytime, um, perhaps it's a sport aircraft that will never even had a light package installed on the aircraft. Um, but then you wouldn't be allowed to fly that aircraft at night because anti-collision lights are required. P stands for position lights or your nav lights. That's your, your wing lights, your red and green, and your white tail light. And then finally, a source of electric. So your alternator or generator must be working in order for you to go on that night flight. So again, the aircraft's uh, equipment required are all of your day VFR items plus your night VFR items. Now one other thing I want to point out is when actually do we need these? Well, according to the FAA, our position lights, or nav lights, are required at official sunset. Okay, so if official sunset is 8 p.m., that's when your lights must be on in the aircraft. And then you can start logging about 30 minutes later is the uh, definition of nighttime. Okay, that end of evening civil twilight to the beginning of morning civil twilight. All right, next we have um, the aircraft interior lights. So you've never been concerned about how to turn on the interior lights during all your day flights. You don't wanna wait until it's too dark in the cockpit to figure that out. So be sure that you know how to use the interior lights before it gets too dark. And also I recommend try to do your pre-flight while it's still light outside if you have that opportunity. Um, that way you won't miss something um, now granted, you're going to use your white flashlight if it's already dark, 
But if you have the opportunity to pre-flight in the day, by all means, still pre-flight during the, the daylight hours. Um, the next thing is uh, scanning for traffic at night. So if you're uh, scanning for traffic during the daytime, the typical pattern we would use are 10 degree increments. So we purposely scan in 10 or 15 degree increments across the horizon looking for traffic. But at night, we, we see a little differently. During the day, we use cones, which um, allow us to kind of focus in on something, and it, the cones allowed us, allow us to see in color. But at night, we use more of our peripheral vision, which are your rods, and that's where you see your black and white. So at night, the proper way to scan would be kind of to gaze or use off-center viewing. And then if you see an object moving in your peripheral, then you can turn and focus in on that object. So your method of scanning is slightly different at night. Next we have, um, for discussion, we have altitude selection. So some people say, well, I want to fly a lot higher at night because if I have an emergency or some kind of engine issue, that gives me more time or opportunity to select a landing field because obviously you may not be able to see what you're landing into. And then other people say, well, I don't want to fly so high because my eyes are going to be deprived of oxygen and all those tiny little vessels require a lot of oxygen in order to see clearly. So um, we will talk about the oxygen requirement versus recommendation. In a previous video, we had discussed um, when the uh, crew and passengers are required to have oxygen. Remember, it was above 12,500 for greater than 30 minutes. Pilot and crew need oxygen above 14,000, pilot and crew need oxygen, and then finally above 15,000, of course, pilot and crew still need oxygen, but passengers must be offered oxygen. So that's the actual requirement or regulation, but for the recommendation portion, um, at the daytime, the FAA recommends using oxygen above 10,000. And uh, keep in mind also that all of these are cabin pressure altitudes. So the FAA recommends that you use oxygen during the day above 10,000, but they recommend 5,000 at night. So an examiner may ask you why, why do they lower the recommendation for the use of altitude at night? And again, the answer lies with your tiny vessels in your eyes need that extra oxygen uh, to help support your vision. So these are some extra considerations when you're going on your night flight. The I'm safe, your personal equipment, meaning your flashlights, the aircraft equipment would be all your day VFR items. Now, in addition, the uh, FLAPS acronym, and then the um, be sure you know how to use the aircraft interior lighting. Um, your scanning for traffic is slightly different at night where you use off-center viewing. And then your altitude selection, um, it's kind of a toss-up if you want to fly a little higher or a little lower for particular reasons. And then finally, um, consider your oxygen usage um, if you have additional oxygen.